Now thank you so much ladies and gentlemen for watching this video and please welcome back to my political analysis for today. Sorelle Odinga has been under severe pressure recently to name his successor ahead of his official retirement from politics of the Republic of Kenya. But the main question that I've always been asking myself, is Raila Odinga ready to retire from the politics? Because I personally thought that immediately Raila Odinga lost the previous 2022 general election to President William Ruto. I thought he would go for his retirement together with the former head of state, Uhuru Mwagia Kenyatta. But from Raila Odinga's recent political activities, clearly shows that he is not ready to retire because, first of all, he has not yet handed over the leadership of the Azimio Lomoja Alliance. And secondly, from the look of things, there is a high possibility that Raila Odinga is preparing himself to run for the presidency again in 2027. So let us wait how things will unfold. But when it comes to that discussion, majority of Kenyans believes that there are two main politicians who fits very well in Raila Odinga's political equation. So before we go into deeper details of this video, I'm just requesting you to please subscribe and give this video a like. You can also press the notification bell down below so that every time I upload a video here, YouTube will automatically update you by sending you the notifications. Otherwise, to my returning subscribers, I also want to appreciate you so much for your continued support. Feel very much welcome as you watch, and I really don't take your support for granted. Now let us go straight into our analysis for today. So the first person who majority of Kenyans believe that Raila Dinga will pick to be his successor is the Wiper Party leader, Honorable Stephen Kanonzo Nsioka. Because first of all, Kanonzo Nsioka has proved his loyalty to Raila Dinga in that he has supported Raila Odinga thrice in 2013, 2017, and in 2022. So we believe that Raila Odinga, because of that, because of their political history together, well, political history together, we don't believe, we don't, I don't think that Kanonzo Msioka will still support Raila Odinga for the fourth time in 2027. But also, there is a likelihood because Kanonzo Msioka being the person that he is, being the person that does not calculate his political mathematics very well, there's a likelihood that he will still support Raila Odinga in 2027 presidential bid if Raila Odinga will stand or will, 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 will contest for the presidential bid in 2027. Secondly, Kanonzo Msioka, the truth of the matter is that he delivers. Kanonzo Mzioka delivers votes to Raila Odinga, majority of votes, because the Weber Party still dominates in the uh, Kambani region and also in Kenya at large. Recently, during the previous 2022 general election, actually the Weber Party became that largest party or affiliate party in the Azimio Lomoja Alliance. So you can clearly tell that majority of the Kambani region people still stand with Kanonzo Msioka and the direction that Kanonzo Msioka always takes them, they always agree with that. And that is why the Wiper Party is still dominating the Okambani region. Parties like the Jubilee Party in the coming 2027 general elections, I personally believe that they will be no longer existing because of the political situation in the larger parts of the Mount Kenya region. They are trying to force people in a direction that people, majority of people, do not want. But that is a story for another day. And also, when you look at Kanonzo Msioka's experience, I want you to remember that Kanonzo Msioka has been in the politics of the Republic of Kenya for the longest period of time. Kanonzo Msioka's experience as the former vice president during Kibaki's regime fits very well in Reloadinga's political equation. In fact, the person that Reloadinga should consider most is Kanonzo Musioka. The second person is the Kenya party leader, Martha Karo. First of all, the reason as to why majority of Kenyans believe that Martha Karo should be endorsed, should be, 
should take that position as a successor of Reloadinga is because of first of all she is a woman being a woman uh, means that the gender equation is already solved majority of Kenyans would want to see a woman president majority of Kenyans would want to see a woman being uh, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the presidential contest so being a successor or reloading and endorsing Martha Karua it already serves that, that the gender equation the politics of the Republic of Kenya but I don't think if Martha Karua is that strong enough to take that position but everything in politics is way much possible and secondly Martha Karua's bold moves Martha Karua has her own political stand despite the fact that she is facing a lot of resistance in the larger parts of the Mount Kenya region Martha Karua still sticks with Raila Odinga. you know the, the the main reason as to why Martha Karua is facing that rejection from the from her own region the central region is simply because she is attached to reloading the truth of the matter up to date is that reloading is still facing a lot of rejection in the larger parts of the larger of of mount kenya region so anybody associated with reloading always faces that rejection but master karua's political stand to support reloading always proves her loyalty to reloading secondly her bold move uh, in the opposition side you know majority of people thought that simply because Relodinga has lost the previous 22 general election uh, Martha Karua was going to defect from the Azimio Lomoja alliance but she has that political stand but let me shock you according to Relodinga his own successor the features that Relodinga is looking at is first of all the person must come from the ODM party according to reloading he cannot appoint he cannot endorse somebody from another party the ODM party comes first his own party secondly reloading a successor according to him must come from the Luo Nyanza region therefore you would have solved the kingpin of the Luo Nyanza region and also to protect the interest of the people from the Luanyanza region. So basically that was my analysis for today. Thank you so much for watching. I don't have much. Until next time, my name is Jason, but please don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Bye bye.